Hey, guess what? Got a new intro burning shit. This is from an old capacitor that I just took apart. Ooh, flames. Really cool. Whatever's burning there, it's probably really poisonous and I will die. But, yeah, who cares? <laughs> Okay, so what we're gonna do today is repair or attempt to repair this thing. This is a Chinese heat gun that I purchased a long time ago. <laughs> and it recently, aka five or six months ago, um, stopped working with a bang. Um, since then I tried to repair it once. I replaced a part that I thought would have been broken, but no. That was not it and it makes uh, noises and that is most probably the heater that's on because the LED comes on which means the heater is getting power but the fan is not running that's bad also the heater is basically set on oh it's on maximum that's why well nothing happening okay much better um, so yeah, seems the heater isn't stuck on, so the only thing that's not working is the fan. And the reason why this thing broke was that I was using the smallest nozzle on the thing. Um, maybe I should, maybe I can get it out of the box with one hand. Um, right, there it is. Here, this. This is a nozzle. goes on top here. <clears throat> now, if you put this thing on minimum air and turn off the heat, um, you get a problem. Um, so the air is slowly moving through this tiny, tiny hole here. Um, and the electronics that are in here usually require the airflow, the full airflow, to be cooled. Guess what happens if you let this sitting for like 15 minutes, running on lowest air, basically blocked? Yeah, it goes bang. So I thought, what would fail first? Probably some semiconductor. No. Uh, probably not, because I replaced the semiconductor that I thought would have failed. And nothing happened. The display is still black. Uh, well, black. Clear doesn't show anything fans not running so I thought hey let's investigate again a few months later maybe I'm smarter this time okay let's take it apart not on camera because that might take some time and some curse words so B or B okay so I got the thing apart and you can kind of see the two separate circuits well maybe maybe not this camera isn't that good at tiny things um, let me take a screwdriver to point. Yay, no light. Um, okay, this thing here is an LM317. Um, that was used to drive the motor. That's a variable voltage regulator. Not perfect for this purpose, but it works. Um, and I thought this would have broken because, well, the motor is out, everything else is out. This is probably it. Well, I replaced it. This is a new one. And no, that was not it. So, something back here, this, well, you can't even see it, this gray thing here is a resistor. And it's missing, uh, I can't even show it to you without breaking shit here. No, yeah, that's just too dark. Um, it's missing parts. Uh, what parts? Um, from the coding. So... Initially I thought, well, must be a bad resistor that just like uh, lost its color. But recently I thought about it again and I was like, what if the bang was the resistor? Because I didn't see any scorch marks around the resistor. So I decided to take it apart again and now measure the resistor. Um, because everything else on here just seems fine. Nothing looks like it exploded because the only things that could break are on this side this here is the high voltage side driving the heating element in here um, so the only parts that could break are on here and I guess it is this resistor here 
So I will measure it and then not replace it because I do not have resistors of this size um, and probably also not of that value. So I don't know what I will do. Yeah. Okay, guess what? I measured it and it's open circuit. Um, that's bad. So now I have to find a resistor of the same value. Which I do not really know, because the color codes on this thing are as bad as its quality itself, it seems. And... Uh, guess what I forgot before I uh, took it apart and when I showed you the resistor. Right. I forgot to take the plug out. Luckily I did not touch any parts that were live. I don't know how I did it, but... Guess I was lucky, or I had the luck that only um, that the uh, line was switched by the switch, which is off, um, and that only the ground was on the board. I don't know. Dangerous things, great! Yeah, okay, so I need to figure out what value of resistor that is, and then replace it. Um, yeah, let's see. I'll report back when I have the value. Okay, I figured it out. It's uh, brown, black, gold, gold, which according to this chart is 1, O times 0.1. God dang it. Um, this is not a touch screen, this just opened up. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a 1 ohm resistor. So it's either just for current limiting uh, or for current sensing. I don't know. So, the thing is, the lowest resistors that I have, let's take a look, is 10 ohms. I don't know if you can read that. Here, it says 10 ohms. That's the lowest one I have. I have no fucking idea what I am going to do now. <laughs> um, it seems like this is coming out of the rectifier. Oh, god damn, you can't see shit when I'm pointing my big fat fingers there. Okay, rectifier goes on the other side to the resistor. Um, and from there, I don't know where. Yeah, oh, god dang it, stay, can't. Okay, yeah, see here, goes from this side there. Um, and yeah, this part is probably ground that goes somewhere over here. Um, can you even see that stupid camera is always turning off? Okay, I don't know if you could see this, but here again. This trace is ground. This one, I let... Is it ground? I don't know. I'm confused by this thing. Wait, this is... Oh, okay, it's coming in this way and then going to ground which is this side and positive which is this side the point is this thing gets too much power um, and I guess it really just is for current limiting what would happen if I replaced it by just a normal link I could risk it and completely break it this time or I could take a bigger resistor <laughs> which I also do not have um, also I would probably have to put it on this side because here I don't know if there's space for a bigger resistor I could put in two ohms but let's see Let, let's calculate if this is one ohm this looks like a half watt resistor so it was over its rating so I don't know Let's say it was at its rating, half of what was flowing through, was uh, not flowing, was dissipated in it. Half of what? Um, at one ohm. God dang it. Was it uh, half of what? I think wattage was I squared R. So I squared has to be 0.5. So like something like 0.7 amps or so. 0.7? Yeah, 0.7 sounds kind of right. So 0.7 amps were going through here. 
700 milliamps. That's not that much for a motor. So this thing is ridiculously undersized. Um, this also has to drive the display, which is back here. And this display also, or only, has a uh, thermocouple input, which is somewhere up here. goes with two wires to the main board through these four wires um, goes power and the thermocouple up to this board um, which then shows its temperature in Celsius. <coughs> so this thing has to drive both of it. 700 milliamps at, well, a very low speed, low fan speed. But yeah, you have a linear regulator which also burns a lot of power because it, will, it isn't heat sink for nothing. Um, I'm just wondering what the fuck should I do? Bigger resistor, bigger resistance or just no resistor at all? I mean, what could happen? <laughs> yeah, what could happen, eh? One ohm isn't that much. It's barely anything. Usually you would, you would use this for current sensing, but I mean I don't see any current sensing. Also it's on the AC side. Um, also I'm wondering how does it get down from mains voltage which comes in here down to uh, uh, normal levels. Well, that could be why it's here. Where is it, the resistive dropper? Is this in line? I don't know. Um, I will further investigate this thing and then tell you what it's all about. Okay, little update. Um, I was stupid again. So, I looked at the circuit um, for a few minutes. And you get here, input, goes to switch one side, other side goes here. Um, switch also goes here. So we have a rectifier. Rectifier goes... Um, well, can, can I really not show this without breaking it? God dang it, this is so stupid. Okay, I need a third hand, motherfucker. God dang it, I, I hate this. These cables are not long enough to show shit. Ah, stay there! Okay. Ah, bang. Okay, I'm gonna show it like this, I hope. Do it. Okay, you see, uh, here's the rectifier, which goes into, well, one side of it goes into the, um, god dang it, what's it called? Coil of this, um, uh, of this transformer here. Uh, then the other side goes somewhere to these two transistors here. I thought these were for uh, switching the power to the to the thing to the heating element but that's not like it it seems this is a switch mode power supply for the display and the motor um, I don't know what it switches to but probably something like I don't know 20 volts um, then you have this regulator and the display this thing above here is probably a triac um, if you know well, let's see if I have such a circuit here. Um, I No, I do have such a circuit here. I just do not know where. God dang it. <laughs> they have been there, but I moved them somewhere else and I do not know where I put them. That's stupid. Can you, can you spot them? It's like a 2.5 kilowatt triag regulator. I do not see it. Okay. Get to switch it off and the camera off and search for it. Be Guess what? I found it. Okay, so quick random. You have a resistor here, you have a resistor there. You have a center diode, which is the other blue thing that does not have stripes. You have a resistor here t for tuning. I never actually used that. Uh, and you have two caps and the triac itself here in a pot. Um, what you have here is a pot. That, well, one of these. I don't know which one. Um, you have a capacitor down here, the red thing. Um, you have one of these strange center diodes and you have probably have a triac next to it. Um, so I guess the high voltage circuit is like right next to the low voltage one. But 
hey, who doesn't want 200 volts on the tiny motor that's in here? Okay, so now that I got it figured out, uh, I probably don't know what to do. <laughs> um, I don't know why the hell there isn't one ohm resistor. Especially as there must be 200 volts flowing through it, so... <laughs> 200 volts, 0.7 amps. That is a shitload of power. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I mean, seriously, is that that's how it works, right? Goes through the resistor to the rectifier into the switch mode power part. What the hell is going on? I mean, I can't take it out because I don't want to resolder all the wires. I already had to do that for the motor because the wires just came off of the motor and the board. So they were just <coughs> flying around. And they were not that high quality, so I used these solid core wires here. Um, yeah. What the fuck? If this thing popped due to heat... The heater was off, obviously. The fan was on lowest setting. And we're pulling 0.7 amps at 200 something volts. <laughs> I mean the thing was really hot when I touched it. Where is all the power going? I mean, it's a normal switch mode supply. I should just put a capacitor in there and, and just use that instead. <laughs> I, I mean, actually, I could put a capacitor in there. I could calculate the equivalent resistance at 60 Hz and choose one that uh, would be 1 ohm. I'm going to do the calculations then. Maybe I have such a cap. I will, I will guarantee to you I do not. I have this parts bin over here. It's a lot of parts. Old parts. There's a selenium rectifier in there. <laughs> so, yeah, really old parts, some really new parts. Um, we will see. Fucking th I don't know if you can read this, but we would need a capacitor that has 3183 microfarads. <laughs> yeah. These ones here, that I have like, I don't know, 0.1 microfarad. Guess how big this has to be to replace that resistor. Okay, so there is no option at replacing that resistor with a capacitor. Um, that sucks. So, what? <laughs> I gotta get a 1 ohm... 1 watt resistor because this is clearly half watt or something I mean all these small ones here are supposed to be rated at 0.25 god dang it fucking stupid shit um, yeah I, I don't know I have to fix this at some point so it does not get pressed into the thing <sighs> fuck this just fuck everything. Ah, uh, okay. So, this is probably 0.5, if not 1 watt. But let's see, I do have 1 watt resistors somewhere. Let me take a short look. You can look at this, I don't know, this beautiful thing here in the meantime. Um, probably put that resistor somewhere else. And now this thing is stuck again. God dang it, get in there. Um, come on, come on. Okay, get it. Okay. Um, you see the size difference? This is probably one watt. This is probably half a watt. 
Interestingly enough, this is almost the right value. <laughs> Just that this has a red instead of a gold. Um, let's see, what would red mean? Times 100, so that's 1k. If I'm not mistaken. Let's measure that. Let's take the super crappy multimeter I have, like so crappy you, you won't believe it. The resistance range is broken, the 200 ohms. See this? That's 200 ohms. It's just going up and down all the time. I don't know. I probably fucked this up at some point. Um, let's do the 2000 ohm uh, region. Let's see. God dang it, I can't even hold things. This. This. Come on. Yep. 980 ohms. So, that is 1k. At... And it's 1 watt. So... I have to get a 1 watt resistor at 1 ohm. Just to repair this thing. I don't know if it would be cheaper to just buy a new one. <laughs> it was like, I mean it was like 35 bucks. But... That's probably more expensive than a resistor. But still, there's so much time that's flowing into this thing, and so much anger and cursing. I don't know if it's even worth it, but I don't have anything else, and I need it at some point. I mean, currently I have, as a replacement, the thing you'd seen in the, in the beginning, this thing, which is like a kitchen supply, actually. Um, but I thought, hey, I'm gonna use this for my workshop. Um, works quite well, but it does not work for electronics. It just burns everything. It goes up to like, well, whatever, I don't know, thousand degrees or something. <laughs> uh, depending on what you put in front of it, it glows orange to bright white. So, yeah, this thing gets hot. So way hotter than this thing. This goes up to, I mean, this will probably melt itself um, at some point. I never had the heater on full before, always like just on the lowest levels because it's really touchy. Um, so you just turn it a bit and it uses temperature equilibrium to get to some point and then stay there kind of. So when you heat it up you just... <laughs> it slowly ramps up, that's kind of annoying. So that it has no uh, f feature uh, to regulate the heating coil based on the temperature. It can tell you the temperature, but it doesn't uh, do anything about it. That's kind of annoying. But I mean, after all, regulating a triac switch thing with a microcontroller is quite hard. I tried that myself once. It did not work. <laughs> um, yeah, I tried to control the triac. I mean, nothing broke, it just didn't work. Um, I tried to create a face controller which is basically this thing or uh, this it's called a face controller try to control this with a microcontroller um, because you have to replace all this circuitry this circuitry is running on full voltage like this uh, pot here and there are no programmable resistors that can take hundreds of volts they're just not there and you would have to replace this to just use the circuit. Would be nice if that worked, but yeah, it doesn't. I mean, I would have to <laughs> use a lot of uh, transistors and uh, resistors to kind of build a variable resistor. Yeah, could build a resistor ladder or something, uh, but that would be pretty stupid. Um, so instead I went for um, a optocoupler. Maybe I can find the project back here. Yeah, it's somewhere under here. Oh my god. So much shit! It's all in the way. Ah, oh, god dang it. Okay. I, it's just so dark you can't even see shit. Um, what is this? <laughs> uh, I don't even know what that is. 
Oh right, that's the counter. Um, is the thing that I'm searching for even in here? Doesn't look like it. Nope. Nope, it isn't even in here. I put it somewhere else. Uh, also, another project that I will probably never finish. This thing, which is supposed to be a... Uh, God dang it. A, um, well, soldering iron that will respond to, well, its temperature. So what I bought, what, <laughs> what I did was, uh, I bought a 160, uh, good thing, 160 watt soldering iron. This thing is massive. Like, wow. <laughs> like, look at my hand at the thing. And now look at my hand and the thing that I normally use. <laughs> Yeah, this is, thing is quite massive, and the thing with the yellow cable is a thermocouple that I put on there to measure its temperature, and you see it's already bluish there <laughs> because it got so hot when I just plugged it in and let it let the smoke out because, um, yeah, it was full of oil and everything, it just smoked a lot and it was glowing orange inside. So they said, hey, that, that's quite stupid to use that without any safety measures. So that was what I also wanted to use a face controller for. Um, to just regulate it and slowly ramp it up and down. Yeah. Instead, I, in the end, I went with a... Um, can you even see that? No, it's so dark in here. This thing is a solid-state relay. I have some over here, too. It's a solid state relay. Um, you see it can switch a lot of AC up here and you can switch with 3 to three, uh, 32 volts DC. So that's quite handy. Um, also these things have an upside. They switch on at the zero point which is when the AC wave is at zero volts um, in reference to the ground. So that's when it switches on and the upside is you don't get sudden flickerings of light when you use that to switch something on. So those are cool. This one is probably fake just as the other one up here and the one in the thing. They're all fake because they were cheap and they were from China and they all look different. <laughs> um, I think these one are actually worse. Um, at least they look worse than the one that's in there. But hey, or did I? Did I use a? Yeah. These are. Yeah, these are. No way. These are different. Okay, which one is? Okay, so I used the bad one, which is probably one of these, in the soldering iron project. Because I thought, well, this is 160 watts. If it has 40 amps, uh, according to this, it will probably. <laughs> Um, be able to handle this what would this be not even an amp <clears throat> yeah and if it crushes and burns then it will crash and burn we will see when I finally get it done and it works but yeah that might be some <laughs> some time till uh, that happens okay I guess this was it for today um, we have a stupid resistor that broke and let's hope that fixing the voltage regulator didn't break anything else. <laughs> yep. I mean, maybe the voltage regulator was broken from the beginning because it was pulling so much power. I don't know. Seriously, I don't know where... Well, what is that? Like 150 watts that had to go in the fucking uh, thing, wherever they went. I mean, it was hot. Like, the whole thing was really hot when I touched it and I was like, whoa, what the fuck happened? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Probably just needs the airflow. So, yeah. Guess I did not forget anything. This stuff here is still here. We will eventually get to it and take a look at it. Um, I disassembled some old uh, digital TV, uh, TV receivers because currently Germany is changing from digital uh, DV no what is it DVB T1 to T2 
and the problem is that our T1 is used nowhere else in the world so all these devices that we had to purchase like I don't know several years ago I don't know maybe eight years or something all these devices are now useless completely useless so I got the parts off of two of them so yeah most of that back here I mean some of it is pretty old shit um, but some of it is also from the um, TV things. I do have the boards up here. Yeah, this is one of the boards. I just took off the, in this case, the switching transformer and the caps and diodes and everything that I could take off of it without completely trashing it. The other one, I went a bit more violent on it. Um, yeah, here. The can is gone, the high high frequency can also took everything off. Also the big chip here, <laughs> I just ripped it clean off because I was like, um, I want to see what the fuck that is. Also it had a heatsink kind of glued to it, um, didn't come off, so I just ripped it apart. And you see all the traces that I lifted, it looks really nice. Um, this one did not have a switching regulator because it had a external power supply, but yeah. I guess that is really now it for today. I will ramble about other things next time.